Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a question from paper one, Chemistry HL from the November 2019 batch. And in this question, they're asking us, which can act as a Lewis acid, but not a bronsted lowry acid. So definitions, understanding the definitions is very key in this question. So what is a Lewis acid? Even though these both, they're asking us to, to basically find out which of these options can act as a Lewis acid and not a bronsted lowry acid. And you may think, okay, they're asking us which can act as acids, but the definitions are actually very, very different. So let's look at what the definition is. What, what, what is a Lewis acid? A Lewis acid is an electron pair. So it, it's an electron pair acceptor. So it accepts a pair of electrons and naturally a Lewis base would then be an electron pair donor. So this is the definition of a Lewis acid. So it, it, it has the capacity to accept a pair of electrons. So what is a bronsted Lowry acid? So a bronsted Lowry, I'm just, BL is bronsted Lowry. A bronsted Lowry acid is an H plus donor. So it donates a proton. And a bronsted Lowry base is an H plus acceptor. So it accepts an extra hydrogen or an extra H plus. So now that we've got our definitions out of the way, let's take a look at these options. Let's, let's see which, which of these options fits the criteria that our question is asking us. So which of these, uh, which of these options can accept a pair of electrons, but it cannot donate a hydrogen or an H plus. So which of, which option is these? Now, what I like to do with MCQs uh, mostly is I like to play the elimination game. So I eliminate two options or one or two options, which seem most unlikely. And out of these options, B and D are automatically out because they've, uh, because they've told us in the question that the substance or, or, or the element cannot be a bronsted Lowry acid. And both of these substances can act as bronsted Lowry acids. Let me, let me show you how. So NH3, can react with water to produce NH4 plus, plus, sorry, my apologies, plus OH minus. And in this case, you can see water, which is H2O, is acting as a bronsted Lowry acid, right? Because it donates an H plus or a proton to NH3, and NH3 then becomes NH4 plus and H2O becomes OH minus because it has lost or it has donated one of its hydrogens to NH3. So in this case, you can see that it can act as a bronsted Lowry acid, but our question has told us that it cannot act, uh, what is, which substance cannot act as a bronsted Lowry acid. So that's why this is automatically out. What about NH3? How does NH3 act as a bronsted Lowry acid? So NH3, plus OH minus gives us NH2 minus plus H2O. And uh, it should be fairly obvious. In this case, you can see that NH3 has donated one of its protons or one of its H plus to OH minus. And OH minus has consequently become water. And NH3 has become NH2 minus because it's lost one of its hydrogens or H plus. So in this case, you see that it, it, it is capable of acting as a bronsted Lowry acid. That's why it is out of uh, question as well. We shouldn't even consider it. Now we're left between two options, A and C. Now both of these uh, look convincing, right? They, they obviously cannot act as a bronsted Lowry acid because they don't even have hydrogens. So if they don't have hydrogens, how can they donate it? But can both of them really accept a pair of electrons? Because that's the first condition, right? They should be able to act as a Lewis acid and Lewis acid accepts pair of electrons. So can both of them accept a pair of electrons? Let's see, can NF3 accept a pair of electrons? So let's, let's draw the Lewis structure. 
And remember, nitrogen is in group 15, so it has five valence electrons, and currently it is using only three valence electrons in bonding, so five minus three. That means that there are two electrons which are non-bonding, and that also means that they are, in, they are a lone pair, right? So let's count how many uh, electrons nitrogen has. So nitrogen has one, because remember, uh, the electrons that are being shared in a bond belong to both atoms. So this electron, which comes from fluorine, belongs to both nitrogen and fluorine, and it's the same case for the rest of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So nitrogen already has eight electrons. That means it has a full shell. It has a full valence shell, and nitrogen cannot even expand its octet. So that means that nitrogen cannot accept a pair of electrons. There is no space for it to accept a pair of electrons. It can't do that. Possibly, it, it's not possible, right? So that means it cannot act as a Lewis base. And that means that our correct, correct option is actually A. So well, how does A accept a pair of electrons or how, how does it have the capacity to accept a pair of electrons? So uh, from, from your periodic table, and remember you're allowed to use your periodic table um, in paper one, you know that boron is in group 13. That means it has three valence electrons. And fluorine, and, it, and it's bonded to three fluorines. So there we go, you have fluorine, fluorine, right? Let's count how many electrons does boron have now? So it has one, two, three, four, five, six. It only has six electrons. And remember, it needs, it can, it can have up to eight electrons, but it only has six. That means it is capable of accepting a pair of electrons from a, a Lewis base because it has this empty spot over here, which can be filled up by two additional electrons, right? So for example, I'm just gonna give a random example over here. Um, OH minus can take its, its electrons and it can donate it over here and form a bond with boron. So it can actually form something like this because this OH minus and this OH minus in this case will act as a Lewis, uh, Lewis base or um, yeah. So hopefully now you see how A is the correct option and what is the meaning of a Lewis acid? What is the meaning of a uh, bronsted lowry acid? And hopefully you even understand what is the meaning of a Lewis base and a bronsted lowry base. So that will be it for this video. I hope I've helped you understand the concept. I hope that this will help you in your examinations. If you have any other questions regarding this concept or this topic or any other topic, please feel free to reach out to me on my social media. Uh, all the links and the hands are down in the, in the description. Put a comment or send me an email and I'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video with another question.